Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and welcome to The Dr. Leaf Show. Today, I have a very special guest in the studio with me, Priscilla Shira, and we're going to be talking about prayer, faith, and the mind. And we're also going to be diving into the science of prayer. Join me. Welcome to The Dr. Leaf Show. If you haven't yet subscribed, go to the little button at the bottom of your screen and subscribe and you'll be updated with all things related to mind and mental health. Well, with me in the studio today, I have one of my dearest friends, one of the most amazing people on the planet, someone that I have so much respect for and someone who's so authentic and so genuine and so amazing, Priscilla Shira. Thank you so much, you. my dear friend, for coming into <laughs> yes. this. Studio. I'm so excited that you. Well, I'm so excited that you're here, and you're so busy. And I appreciate so much that you've taken the time oh, to come and share. It. But yeah. I know that everything you say are pearls of wisdom. We, our family, have <laughs> That's voted. That's how I feel about you, oh, ma'am. <laughs> We mutually love each other, yeah, which is so great. But yeah. my family voted that you're the best Bible teacher. That we, you know, we could listen to you for oh, hours. You're hilarious. You're praise brilliant. You just make complex things so simple, and you just have such a an incredible attitude to life. And you're so real, you know, with your kids and your boys and your husband and life <laughs> that's my full time job. Are those boys? Oh my gosh, <laughs> laundry. <laughs> Laundry. That I have heard you teach on till on that so many times. That's I've right. used the laundry experience. Yes. To, oh gosh, there's so much laundry with children. Four kids, That's exactly three kids. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Especially when they do all the sports and That's things. That's right. So. Yeah. Constantly washing and folding clothes. Oh, it's it's never ending story. <laughs> but Priscilla, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to dive into today is the concept of prayer because yeah. it's something that we all know is so vitally important as mm. you know this connection to God and and I've been doing a lot of research on how we are designed physically uh, to connect with the Spirit of God every yeah. 10 seconds. So it's literally, you know, when we talk about renewing the mind and bringing thoughts into captivity, that is prayer. It's a constant communication yeah, with God. It is. And it, it reminds me of the scripture verse that says pray without ceasing. And you sort of wonder, how is that possible? So when you teach on connecting with the Spirit of God every 10 seconds, it, it is that concept. It's that yeah, scripture yeah. verse. It is exactly. this constant moment by moment daily, um, as you would say, sort of getting into super position and lo looking at yourself in relationship to how you're honoring God with this moment, with this conversation, how my body language, how my, the words that I'm saying are honoring to the Lord in this moment, those constant check-ins, yeah, that's, that's so, prayer. That's prayer. And so that's, that's so powerful because it's so much more than just this going your prayer closet in the morning, like we've been kind of almost trained to do yeah. growing up in a very years and years of, you know, in, in, within a religious environment. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a constant lifestyle. And I think what really, and I don't know if you've found this because since War Room, I know you get so much the film War Room. Mm -hmm. Priscilla did an incredible film. If you haven't already seen it, you need to see it. War Room, you did that. That came yeah. out two years ago. Oh so gosh, I two, think it's been four years is now. It four years. Can you believe that? No, Maybe believe three. That. Gosh. Time and, just goes so quickly. Uh, no, it, oh my goodness, I can't yeah. believe it. And that whole thing was really about prayer, the power yes, of prayer. Yes, yes. And prayer is a lifestyle, and prayer is a solution. And we get so many emails, and I know you probably get the same mm. thing, of people saying, you know, pray for me, or I've got this problem, or I need prayer, and, and like almost begging God. And then I go to these churches, and I'm teaching, and people are like begging God for, and I'm thinking, doesn't the Bible already teach us that, you know, Jesus rose from the cross, that it is already done. Yeah. You know, and isn't yeah. God beyond space and time? And, and isn't there the Hebrews 11 one that says faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen? Right. So prayer is really, is prayer not accessing substance and evidence? I think that's the key word is accents, accessing. Accessing. That's okay. the word. So Ephesians chapter 1 says that every spiritual blessing has already, we already have every spiritual blessing. Okay, yeah. So what prayer does is it allows us to access the spiritual blessings that have already been allotted to us. So you're right. Nice. Begging is not necessarily a posture for a child of, of God because no. the inheritance is already rightfully yours um, as a result of the price he has already paid. So what prayer does, really prayer, is a God-given key that allows us to unlock the resources of heaven and have them unleashed on the landscape of earth in our lives, in our daily lives. And so um, what War Room did, I think, is um, kind of remind people about the intentionality of prayer, that it's not some um, afterthought or some theoretical uh, thing that you should do on occasion or that mm. other people do that are particularly yeah. spiritual spiritual, <laughs> or that it's not supposed to be locked away into just 
the morning quiet time or the yes. evening devotional. Exactly. That very much it should be those times of concentrated prayer as well. But like you said, mm-hmm. it's a lifestyle it's a of lifestyle, intentionally thinking about yeah. how can I communicate with God intentionally, deliberately, and strategically mm. to make sure that I'm applying what has been allotted to me, the, the promises of Scripture, that I'm applying those to the the points of my life where I actually am seeing that those promises need to be um, fleshed out and need to come to bear in in regards to stuff I'm facing in this relationship or on my job or Mm -hmm. in my finances or in my health. How can I intentionally make sure to grab hold of the promises of God and apply them and live in light of those promises in regards to Mm -hmm. what I'm facing in my life? So prayer is not just a bunch of random words. It is what has God already given to me. And how can I say, Lord, I am ready now to receive this and have this apply to what I am facing in my life right now? That is brilliant. It's it's That is brilliant. That's such yeah. an excellent explanation because what you're saying essentially is that people need to recognize that the solution exists. But it's, it's not in yeah. a, I always say it's not in a baked cake form. God doesn't right. give us the, the cake. We've actually, yeah, <laughs> we actually have to get in that zone and yeah. really access and decide, you know, on, find it. Use That's our right. intellect, get, work with God, you know, wrestle with God like Jacob yeah. did and really find those inheritances which is, 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 exist. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest miracles of prayer is not necessarily that prayer, you know, that God through prayer can change our circumstances. Of course he can. He's a miracle working God. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest miracles of prayer is that in prayer he changes us. That our perspective and our vantage point, the promises we grab hold of, the choices that we make, we see ourselves clearly in prayer because we get a clearer view of God in prayer. So then we face the circumstance that may not change. Our spouse may not change. Our marital difficulty may not change. The financial struggle may not change change right away. The health may take a long time. Yeah, it's right. That those things may or may not change. But we change. Our heart becomes different. Our mind is molded into the image of Christ Jesus. We change in prayer. So then our lives become, um, uh, you know, a, a different sort of experience, not because everybody else changed and everything else changed, but because we did. That's what prayer does. I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, and true. that is so completely accurate because when you get into that love zone that I always talk about, the yeah. love and the fear zone, you looks are like getting this. The love exactly. Zone. It looks like this. <laughs> the, good trees, the, yeah, the good trees, the good trees, exactly. Yeah. That's that's cool. I love that. We need lots of those in our heads. That's right. When we get into that zone, we are getting a new perspective. We are yeah. reconceptualizing and we're looking at it in terms of love. And you know what you're saying? And I'm listening so deeply to, to the spiritual explanation that you're giving. And, and in my head, as a scientist, all the science is popping up. And, you know, it's so, it's so <laughs> fascinating, Priscilla, that, that uh, I think you've heard me teach this before, that this, the um, Oxford mathematician, Sir Roger Penrose, he talks about the fact that we're embedded in love. Mm. And, and it's such a... What what does that mean? You know, you just said all the inheritance you've given all the scriptures talking. You've not all of them. You've you've mentioned certain scriptures about how the inheritance is there available yeah. for us, and that we need to get in and get God's perspective so that we can access. You know, you said a key word: access. The problem is we got to realize that we have to do the work of accessing, <laughs> and right. that accessing. And it's and, and Sir Roger Penrose shows mathematically and with quantum physics that as humans we are embedded in ethical values of love, and the solutions mm-hmm. are in space time and beyond because there's multiple universes, and there's this mathematical equate these these complex mathematical equations showing the beauty and the logic and the intelligence of what we actually are immersed in. Mm -hmm. So God's showing us through science that we live in our solutions Mm -hmm. and that with prayer we are learning to access our solutions and that there's a, a work involved and I think that's another problem that I see in people really praying like they should in that they don't realize that you have to access with work there's work involved yeah. there's you getting your mind it's not just going to clo- you know close your eyes yeah. and god's going to give you the baked cake where yeah. someone lays on hands and now you know there's this automatic transference osmosis yeah. process happening there's <laughs> yeah. work involved yeah what do you well think about that's that? you know the scripture says work out your salvation and fear and Love trembling that. Love and so that. your salvation in terms of eternity the price for that was paid. You and I no longer owe the debt for our own sin. Once we accept Christ as our Savior, we are receiving his gift. So salvation in that sense is done. It is finished. But we're still on earth. 
Well, exactly. So while we're bodies. still on earth, if we want to experience life with God, that's the part that requires work, intentionality, deliberate focus on the promises of God, on living in a way that honors God, on using the keys that he's given us, oh, the love beautiful. letter of his word, the key of prayer, um, humility, um, garners, you know, choosing a, a lifestyle of humility instead of pride, humility, so that we garner the the attention, the, the um, support of mm. God, the favor of God in our life. Those are choices that we have to make. So in the scriptures, mm. there are probably more than or up to 8,000 different promises wow. that are given to sons and daughters. But most of them he did not place in our hand. Most of them he placed in our reach. Meaning That's if we brilliant. don't reach, if we don't mm. grab hold, if we don't actually, like he said to Joshua, listen, the promised land is already yours. But every place you you put your foot down, yes, that you will have access to. It's yours, but you got to go put your feet down. You have to do something. Yeah, you got to do it. So lazy yeah. Christianity is not going to benefit us. Yes. We'll get to heaven, but we won't experience the heaven on earth that we were intended to experience unless we do the hard work of putting our feet down on the promises of God. Well, you've said some incredible cons- things there, and one of the things you said that's very powerful is if we don't do the hard work, if we don't choose yeah. to actually step into the promised land. So using this, the Christian knees, stepping into the promised land in life, we're going to have to yeah. choose to realize that we have ability to we have the ability to access the power of mm-hmm. God step mm-hmm. into that that love zone step into that that the promises that God has placed within yeah. within within the atmosphere that we live in we immersed in God yeah. that we have to do the work and I think that's one of the biggest problems is there's, there's such a, a a mindset in the church of people wanting you to pray for them or someone else to pray for them and then I always talk Priscilla about I was t- telling you this earlier on about past the buck prayer yeah and I've been teaching a lot on that lately where someone says oh I'll pray for you and there's kind of like a half-hearted little prayer in their head or maybe a genuine prayer maybe a really heartfelt and then it's like okay I've done my work mm-hmm. but have you really because I've we been des- guilty of that <laughs> yeah, we all Before, have yeah we all have but really when someone is saying will you pray for me I'm Aren't they saying something deeper? Aren't they saying, can you connect with me? Can you somehow yeah. listen to me? Yeah. I need some kind of support in some way. Should we not be saying, what's your story? Mm. Can mm-hmm. I can I just listen? Yeah. Do you need some time? Can do you want to just talk? Yeah. You know, and is and that's much more effortful. You know, as a, it's, you know, it takes time, it takes the effort, it takes maybe some texts, some phone calls, some emails, some yeah. time that you've got to give up of your own. Yeah. But research shows that your own healing, when you do that, and all of us need healing constantly in every different level, increases by a factor of 68%. When we mm-hmm. give to when others. When we give to others. So when we're praying for others, it's not just for yeah. the benefit of of mankind. It's for the benefit of, well, it is for the, it's benefit of everything. You benefit, the other person benefits. You start putting this whole laws of love into, into I think motion. That's, um, I could be wrong on this reference, but I think it's Luke 6 or Luke 8, somewhere in there, that says give and it will, will be, be given, given back to you. you. Whatever mm-hmm. it is that you need, will give it, and it will be given back to you. Exactly. So if it's time, or if it's attention, or if it's caring, or whatever it is that you need, give it. And that's what comes back to you, which is what you're saying, that exactly. it increases your healing by a certain percentage because you're offering it to somebody else. And it's just one of the laws of our God that well, he exactly. returns that to you. You know, when you're feeding in that really bad place, and you feel like you want someone to pray for you but you ask and then someone says please will you pray for me or please and you think well I don't have the energy or that I need yeah. help that's the time when you really should say yes absolutely what can yeah. I do and you don't have to do much you just have to sit and listen very often yeah. very often it's maybe just five minutes of it of listening but yeah. that's that's part of prayer and as you're listening you can be talking to the spirit of God saying Lord help me here to have discernment what they or have discernment encouragement for this person. what do I want yes and to yeah. think about that person because I think so often when we're listening to other people or even when we're talking to God we're so busy thinking about what we want to say and what we need that we or what we want to say about our experience, about what those person that person is telling us about their experience, that we're not yeah. tuning into their need. So it's yeah. a matter of get rid of your own need for a moment, tune into that other person one hundred percent. Let the spirit of God move through you so that you can speak that word in season. And yeah. as you give that one hundred percent, watch the watch the change inside of you. Because research shows that your brain chemistry actually changes when you do that. Mm. So you and when you pray, your brain chemistry changes. Your brain goes into the highest states of intelligence intellectual function when you get into that state of prayer and worship which is in love going into a state of love you know what i find i've i have found recently that i have been asking god um what to even pray 
Well, that's great. What 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 do you want me to pray? Because see, we always feel like I always feel like I've got the solution for that person. I know what to pray. You know what I mean? Or they <laughs> yes. they think they know. I want yeah. this job or this promotion or yes. we're asking God for that house or so they 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 tell you basically what they want you to pray for them. And obviously his ways are not our ways. Exactly. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And mm-hmm. most of the time our prayer requests are so small. We don't we don't realize it at the time because in our category of solutions, that's the top of the line. But he's got categories we don't even know exist. Exactly. So if and we it's just, constantly expanding. That's right. So yeah. if we just pray in our category, we're actually limiting what could be a breathtaking experience because we want this and God's got stuff we don't even know how to pray for. So I've been thinking, mm-hmm. even in regards to my sons, you know, Lord, I I've got this picture in my head of what I'd love for my yes. boys. But instead of just praying that you would do that, yes. I just want to pray a little bit that you would tell me what you would like for me to pray for my kid. Um, I'm thinking about when Jesus was with uh, Simon Peter and, um, you know, he knew that there was going to be a little tug of war going on yes. uh, spiritually with Peter. And he did not pray that he would not have the struggle. Jesus didn't pray that Simon would not have the struggle. Yes, He prayed that his faith would be strengthened. He said, I'm going to pray that your faith is strengthened. Not that you won't go through what you're about to go through. I'm not going to pray. So you'll have the, you'll have the resilience, in other That's words, right. to get through it. He preferred to pray mm. that his resilience and faith would be strengthened more than he wouldn't have the trouble. And what we pray is, Lord, take it away. Just, just no struggle. Just make sure my just kid make, doesn't go through struggle. I don't want to go through struggle. one big happy story. Right. But that's not life. But if we pray and say, Lord, actually, what are you trying to get out of this situation? For this person or for me, mm. then it probably will change all of change our requests so that we're just praying the mind of Christ for a particular person or for I a love particular that. issue. So I love that. So actually asking God, what yeah. is it that you know what that, is it that you actually want here? Now they 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 one is more involved. That's definitely wouldn't be a pastor by prayer. You're actually tuning into that person. You you're not thinking about yourself or just you know, like whipping off a prayer. You're yeah. actually tuning into the need of that person yeah. via that that connection with the Spirit of God and, right. and yeah. getting that, that, inf- that that's in, that's incredibly brilliant. That's Well, I, I think we will always pray for what is easy and convenient mm. and makes us comfortable because we're humans. We're exactly. flesh. We want life to be easy, especially in the Western part of the oh, world gosh. where we our conveniences of, are, are just so you know. accessible. Yeah. And so we, we pray anemic prayers, mm. feeble, weak prayers because we really just want a happy life. That's exactly. what we want. Um, so it, it will bring, I and think, that's not some, going to do anything for our depth of character and personality. Yeah. It makes us quite selfish. Yeah. And you realize yeah. that when, really when you travel to other parts of the world oh, yes. and you meet people that come from other parts of the world and you see a depth of character, you yes. see a strength of faith through horrible, Absolutely. tragic circumstances. You see them still standing firm and having a peace that passes all understanding. There's a smile still on their face. They can still sleep at night despite the fact that they're going through things most of what, us will never. even. Yes. And you're trying to figure out how did that happen? It's because convenience was not their top priority. They would like convenience. They would like comfort. It doesn't uh, water down those things. It's Mm. just their top priority is how do I honor God? And what does God want in this situation for me and for my family? And so Mm. it kind of conforms their perspective on life's difficulties. Totally different angle, totally different perspective as opposed to... So I agree with you, Priscilla, because what I see so much when I go around doing what I do is people really... I mentioned some in the beginning, begging God for, you know, change my husband, change my child, change yeah. this. Meanwhile, there's, you, that's, that's not even prayer. That's just you trying to put your, impose your will. Meanwhile, we need to be looking at that, trying to, looking at it from a totally different perspective yeah. and seeing that there is that solution available. That's and we've right. got to tune in and we've got to see the reality of, mm-hmm. Reality of not just trying to be happy and peaceful, but yeah. to actually realize what what is it that they're going through, yeah. and get a different perspective. And you're so right about the the, the whole concept of people that are coming from Africa, and seeing and working for 25 years in the most poverty stricken, traumatic environments that you can imagine. You know, you just see the champagne lifestyles and the champagne prayers, as I often call them as well, <laughs> just which is what you describe. Yeah. Is, you know, it's, it's, we need some perspective. It's like we, we need to go through certain things to be able to realize that life's not just about our comfort. Life yeah. is about being human, about bringing heaven to earth with our minds or being held to earth with our minds. Mm-hmm. We literally, by tuning into others, about being community focused and yeah. caring for others, that yeah. whole, so the perspective of prayer is really, Shifting away some from yourself to the needs of others, right? And in that way, your own needs somehow 
get yeah. meat, don't they? I mean, yeah. it's a kind of shift of perspective, isn't it? It is. It's a completely different perspective. And as a, as a mom, that's very easy to. You, know, you <laughs> often talk about your boys and your in, yeah. in, when you teach and and use them as examples, and it's so great because people can relate to that. And you know, what would you give as a practical tip being a mom and praying for your family, well, praying for your husband, say, your boys? And I would say, you know, there's a lot of guilt that we have about this quiet time, about devotions, and they are so important to carve out some time where you yeah. have a place of solitude, of silence, even if it's your bathroom. It's the only yeah. place of silence you can get for a <laughs> few minutes find, and you lock yeah. the door and you sit down and you spend 30 minutes with the Lord or 15 minutes with the Lord. But I think sometimes when we're in seasons of life where our kids are very small, or maybe we're taking care of elderly parents. Maybe yeah. it's to the other side of the mm-hmm. spectrum, or we're just in a very busy season. If we don't have an hour to spend with God, we're so laden with guilt that we haven't done it the way we've been the told it's supposed laws. to be done, mm, that we do so nothing. Good. So it's the yeah. enemy that makes us think if we can't do it this way, then it's not worth trying it anyway. And I think uh-huh. that that women who are, and men who are ra- in the throes of raising a bunch of little kids and everybody's all over the place. And most of the time, you know, when your feet hit the floor, the possibility in the morning. The once possibility of doing. <laughs> it's over. It's, it's, it's not the only time happening. you have pieces when they're all asleep. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, there was an, a wiser, older woman in my life uh, when my kids were much smaller who really helped me to see that um, this would be the time when a time of life when practicing the presence of God mm. is so important. Mm. That's a phrase that Brother Lawrence gave yes. us years ago. Years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's basically what you've described in connecting yeah, every, with the Spirit of God. All day seconds. long, you're just mm. mindful and thoughtful. And you have to be intentional about that. So mm-hmm. if that means writing down scripture verses on three by five cards and posting putting, them where you're going to wash yeah. dishes and where you fold clothes and at the sandbox where you're going to be watching your kid play and on your dashboard taping one there because you're going to be running errands all day. It's this intentional thought of how can I connect with God throughout the day instead of feeling guilty that I didn't have an hour carved out this morning. That's brilliant. And I just think people need to be freed up to know that a relationship with God is not just a morning or an evening. It just... Be with them all day that's long. So, that's really, the, I really wanted to emphasize that in this in the show. And you've, you've verbalized that so magnificently, how we need to have a constant ongoing discussion. Yeah. We become we made from love. We immersed in love. We yeah. are love. Yeah. And we need to have this constant discussion to activate that. So, yes, it's not that the religious laws have really blocked people, I believe, in yeah. praying. Because we think and there's nothing the wrong with those prayers. things. Have devotions. That's have great. Them, if it works for you, but if you can't <laughs> yes. do it in your lifetime. Don't and, let uh, that. Don't your let lifestyle. that keep you from, no. from connecting. And it's not the only way. So you can do that. It doesn't mean that you then turn into a horrible person the rest of the day and you're only nice in your prayer time. <laughs> but it's that you right. actually maintain it through the day. And it's, re- you know, I love using my reminders on my phone if I'm working on something. Yeah. You know, that just pops up and it's, you know, you can set them to pop up as often as you yeah. want and it just keeps you yeah. focused. Well, whenever I'm on, um, Whenever I get to take a little vacation, maybe once a year I'm on vacation or um, I happen to be in some couple days where I, you know, maybe the kids went to Granny's house yes. and I'm I'm at home and I get to wake up leisurely and have a cup of coffee. Whenever those moments happen, yes. I'm always thinking, Lord, can this right here last? Like, how do I get... <laughs> How do I get this I to go that. into regular life yeah. when when life is busy and we're running errands and we got games and all that? And that's what what you're describing about connecting with God. That's the bridge of how to bring yeah. that feeling of I'm on vacation into the regular into, rhythms of life. It can't just be we're waiting for that week in Mexico or that week on that cruise. Exactly. It has to be where I find out how to have a rhythm of grace and peace by God's Spirit. That's why we have God's Spirit. That's the that's the whole point of God being in us and exactly, with us. Exactly, exactly. Is to have that rhythm and enjoy the abundant life He's given us access to throughout the whole year, not just once a week when we get to go on vacation. <laughs> what you just said, this is profound. What, Pris- what Priscilla has just said is so incredibly profound that this is not just a now and then thing. This is not just, but that peace that you get when you have those moments of, of exceptional joy when you're watching your kids or you're with your husband and, and, and you're on that holiday cruise. That should be 
in our everyday moments, we need to learn how to tap into that. We need to be able to rest in our busyness. And that's mm, kind of what you're rest saying. In our busyness, and yeah. and prayer helps us, doesn't it, Priscilla, to rest in that busyness. Yeah. Because we're not going to be unbusy. No, I don't know and, if that's a word, but we're no, not going to be unbusy. Well, it's a new one. It's one now because it's a great, but we're not, we always, and we can do busy well. You know, the science shows that we're designed to do busy well, but we can do that by keeping our souls focused and our brain is just going to respond to our mind. Yeah. Our body is just going to respond to our mind. Right. That's the mind brain connection. Connection. So when we talk about the mind-brain connection, we really are talking about prayer. We're yeah. talking about self-regulation. We're talking yeah. about, if you know, you think the, just the, 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 the renewing of the mind, the bringing thoughts into captivity. This is, and the implication there is what you were saying. It's a self-regulation. Yep. And it's a self-regulation that keeps us in a state of peace where I often explain what you've just explained now as freaking out in the love zone. Yeah. So that, that peace that you feel, you can bring into that crazy moment of that That's crazy right. challenge, That's that right. crazy situation, that crazy challenge, yeah. whatever's going on, that you can keep maintaining yeah. that. It's been a constant goal of mine to try to, um, you know, minimize and downsize and, you know, not be busy, busy, busy on all the margins. So I think there is... You know, we have to control our business. We have to align it. We have to think about priorities. And But the reality is, Love even that. when we get our priorities in order, even when we um, put first things first, and we're still going to be busy. Even yes. if things are ordered, you're still going to be busy. Yeah. You know, my, my boys are going to have games. They're, they're in three different sports. We're going to have games that we have to exactly. go to. This one has this test coming up tomorrow. That one has that test coming up tomorrow. There is still dinner to be made. Laundry still has to be done. Mm-hmm. Yes. So there's going to be busyness. And you've got a dog now too. That, we've got a dog. <laughs> I don't know how this happened in my life. That's so, that's but it so happened. you've got a dog. <laughs> And it they, makes a boy happy. Your, that's your fourth child. That's the that's fourth what child. Happens. Exactly. So, so there's going to be busyness. So instead yeah. of being, instead of being, you know, upset that our life is busy, the reality is, like you're what saying, you we to have do? to find rest in the busyness. Exactly. And, and um, how to handle and how to capture ourselves when we feel ourselves. Oh, this is too much. Bringing ourselves back. If you make the mistake and get frustrated or get yeah. irritated by self-regulating, by living a lifestyle of prayer, mm-hmm. by connecting to the Spirit of God every 10 seconds, which is what we're designed to do, yeah. we then catch ourselves, instead of falling apart and freaking out in those moments, we actually can freak out in the love zone. We can yeah. draw back on that, okay, I've got to do this, and you might be, but, but you can yeah. still have that there's something yep. in you that's yep. just flowing, and that's that love, that connection with the Spirit of God, that yeah. connection with love, and it's expressing. I think that's what, you, mm-hmm. what you're saying, and, and, and that we can all do that we can strive for that we we design for that you know that's what i love about design science priscilla because yeah. everything you're saying everyone who's watching knows that this is reality we know what priscilla is saying is what we all we, we know it instinctively you know what priscilla has been saying what we've been discussing is something that you aspire to that you instinctively feel that's something that you can you, you believe in but how to bring it into your life how to bridge it into your life how to make it part of your life this is something you can do you you can do this, but you have to choose to do it. Priscilla, if you had to give a closing statement, mm. something that would be, how would you wrap this up? What would you, something practical, that what would you do, like a a way of, a, it's choice, it's accessing. Could yeah. you give us a wise statement, a Absolutely. closing statement to make I, this a Yeah, reality? I would just really say to make a decision, like she said, choice is the very beginning, of, to make a decision that tomorrow or today, I am going to start to, self-regulate, which means, as she's described, standing outside of yourself and monitoring in those moments where you're starting to feel frustrated and um, starting to feel the stress overwhelm you and begin to dictate your actions and your words to take that moment to self-regulate. But not only that, to take out a pen and a piece of paper and write down, literally write down what you're going to be mindful of throughout the day, the moments that you already know that are coming, conversations you already know you're going to be having to have with a boss or a coworker or a spouse, um, things that normally arouse something in you that you don't like the look of. Go ahead and write those things down and then pray specific to those things and ask the Lord in advance to prepare you for those moments and then ask him to already give you the peace, already give you the tools that you can access in the moment that those things arise that will enable you to honor him and to honor those around you when those moments come. Thank you for joining us today and I look forward to seeing you next time. This is the Dr. Leaf Show. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that discussion and learned lots of information about prayer, faith, and science. And if you want to keep up to date with all things related to the mind and mental health, don't forget to subscribe. The little button at the bottom of your screen, just press that and you'll be kept up to date. 
Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf. Are you tired of failing? Tired of not getting those good grades, even though you studied for hours? Tired of having all these goals and dreams, but not able to make them happen? Maybe you're just tired of failed relationships. But the real key to success lies at the inside of all of us, and that is in our mind. If we don't get our mind right, nothing else in our life will go right. Dr. Leaf's latest book, Think, Learn, Succeed, includes her gift profile and scientifically proven five-step learning process to help you understand and use your unique mind to find meaningful success in school, work, and life. Order your copy today. Thanks for joining us today. Dr. Leaf's best-selling book will help you find the switch that will turn on your brain and enable you to be happier and healthier in your mind and body, more prosperous and more intelligent. No diet will work unless you have the right mindset. In the book, Think and Eat Yourself Smart, Dr. Leaf will show you how to eat real food mindfully and develop a healthier body, brain, and spirit. Do you struggle to find your identity and purpose? The Perfect You will help solve life's questions by providing you with a blueprint for your unique mind. Detox your brain in 21 days with Dr. Leaf's best-selling online program, The 21 Day Detox. Accessible from your phone, tablet, or computer, this program will show you how your thoughts impact your spirit, soul, and body. To stay up to date on all things related to the mind and mental health, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching today, and be sure to tune in next week for another great episode.